Well, good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you all out on another Sunday morning. I always like Sundays because it's the first day of the week, and that's the day that the Lord rose, and that's why we're here this morning. And uh, we've already made it halfway through January, so this year is already flying along. I hope you've had a, a good first half of January so far. All right, well, let's just open in a word of prayer as we spend some time with the Lord here this morning. Dear Lord, we just thank you again for time that we can set aside where we can sing to you, where we can praise you and worship you, Lord, and where we can hear from you. We just pray that you'll speak to our hearts today and just pray that you'll just help us. And we just pray these things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, the first song we're going to sing this morning is titled Standing on the Promises. May all stand and we will sing all four verses for this one. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear are sealed, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Next song you're going to sing is uh, To God Be the Glory. Praise 
Praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, to Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory. Great things He hath done, great things He hath told us, great things He hath done. Welcome to church this morning. We're glad that you're here. If you are visiting with us, thank you so much for coming. If you'd like to, we'd like to have a record of your visit. You can do that one of two ways. I believe on the chairs should be something where you can scan a QR code on your phone, fill out the uh, connection card, or you can do it the old-fashioned way, pen and paper at the welcome table. Uh, but we're glad that you're here. And if you're not visiting with us, we're glad you're here too, right? Okay, Brother June and I are glad you're here. Everyone else is asleep. That's normal. That's about par. It's good to have the Espinosas back. And I like hearing Brother June lead the singing better than I like me leading the singing. And I'm sure you do too, but that's wonderful. And uh, some things just to remember, some things that are coming up. Um, 26th of January is Australia Day. 8.30 in the morning, we're going to have a barbecue uh, breakfast brunch together. It's going to be at McGavin View. So if you've ever, we were there last year, we've done several things there. Um, if you have young children, uh, there is a playground right in front of where we're going to be barbecuing that they can play and have a good old time. If you have older children or your young adults, uh, there's a nice big grassy area where if you want to hit a cricket ball around or throw a ball around, you can do that. And uh, there's plenty of places to cook and have food and fellowship. So we're going to be doing that the 26th of January at 8.30 at McGavin View. And then on the 18th of February, man, that's our next prayer breakfast. And so we'll be planning that, getting you information about that. Now, uh, in April, we have now confirmed a number of people who have made the reservations. So April 3rd to April 6th, we're gonna be having church family camp. And we'd love to have you join us. Uh, there's plenty of room to join us if you're joining us in a tent. However, they're running out of, it's a place where you can get an unpowered site, a powered site, or a cabin. Um, they're running out of cabins, and so if you want a cabin, you better get one with, by the end of this week. If not, just join us in a tent, and we'll have a good time. And uh, it'll be a great time of fellowship. There'll, ladies, there'll be some ladies' crafts going on for you. And um, guys, we do what we'll do at camp and probably just sit around a fire and do nothing. And that, that's a fun thing to do as well. And uh, if you, there'll be games and all sorts of things to play. We'll have some services. And it'll just be a good time of fellowship together. So those are some things uh, that are coming up. And if you have children that aren't in children's church... The children's sermon notes pages are available on the welcome table. You can take that out, fill it out as we go through the church service. If you bring one back to me done, I have prizes for you. And you can uh, share with me what you learned in church and songs you liked, and we'll give you a prize uh, for doing that. And uh, we're glad that each and every one of you are here this morning. At this time, if you take your Bible, turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Josiah is going to come, and we're going to have our scripture reading for this morning. As Pastor said, the scripture reading today is from Ephesians chapter 5. We'll be reading verses 16 and 17. Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 16 through to 17. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. May the Lord have his blessing upon the reading of his word. So we're going to sing uh, before the message is entitled Blessed Assurance. 
We'll sing uh, all three verses for this time. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of the Spirit, was in His blood. And this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day long Perfect submission, perfect delight Visions of rapture, the birds on my side Angels descending, bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is the dress, I in my Savior. I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All right, at this time, if you have children that are going to be participating in children's church, uh, they can be dismissed at this time, and um, they can go and have enjoy that. Uh, they're having this month, uh, they have a jungle doctor and a tour guide and all sorts of things going on in children's church. Uh, it's a fun place to be, and I did escape finally to children's church a couple weeks ago and got to be in children's church with them while Brother Young was here, uh, but I'll stay this week. I won't try to escape again, uh, but we're glad that you're here. Now, this morning, we have a special uh, guest with us this morning. Uh, if you were in growth groups, you got to meet Brother Ishmael. About six years ago, our church took a mission trip to Vanuatu in about 2017 and helped to build a building there. And uh, we're excited about what's going on there. It's been exciting to see God put Brother Ishmael in that place and be leading that church. And uh, later on this year, um, there's some projects still going on in Vanuatu. So if you're interested in going to Vanuatu, um, I know there's at least one or two people that have mentioned it to me that they'd like to go and they'd like to help uh, build stuff or fix stuff or remodel stuff or whatever he says do, they're willing to do. Um, if you're interested in going to Vanuatu, um, maybe sometime around middle or end of June sometime, uh, do let me know. Uh, we can work that out. We'll be in touch with them and Brother Jeremy. Uh, but at this time, uh, Brother Ishmael is going to come and he's going to bring the message to us this morning. Well, um, good morning, everyone. I am, I am excited and um, <clears throat> really blessed to be here. And as I've said this morning, I, uh, I've been, I've been in, in, uh, in Australia a few times uh, with work and uh, just visiting with friends and families. But it's finally so good to be here. Amen. To be with brothers and sisters who love the Lord and and worship the Lord, and follow Jesus as the Savior, and uh, to wanting to, to see more accomplished uh, in their lives. So, uh, Brother Pastor Cho, uh, I really want to say a big thank you to, to him and uh, 
to all the leaders for this church for allowing me to, to give a message and uh, to say the word. And just be a blessing today for, uh, for God because he, he allows this opportunity for me to, to share something from, from his word. So uh, let's go ahead and pray and then we can jump straight into the word. God, we thank you for this day. Um, we just want to exalt your name. We just want to thank you for who you are and for allowing us to be here and to be a part of uh, your church and to see, um, to see and hear from you, from your word. God, ha, just come lead me and, and hide my thoughts and let your thoughts. Uh, just give me the words and uh, what you wanted for this church to hear this morning. Uh, Lord, I pray that may the word can be a blessing to each and everyone today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, um, I've introduced a little bit of myself earlier this morning, and uh, I, if you haven't like seen me before, I've been... Uh, no part of my family and what we are doing in Vanuatu. I, uh, I, actually, I actually, like I said, I am now pastoring Luganville Baptist Church, which was before uh, Pastor Jeremy and the Finero family were uh, looking after and being the lead pastor and doing everything basically for the ministry. Uh, but since a transition for, for him and the family to like moving back to Australia uh, a few months ago, and uh, I am, I am now being followed by the church to be the lead pastor, and um, I have this woman called Ruby, she's my beautiful wife, uh, and we have our three sons, uh, my, oldest, my oldest is seven years old, and his name after Jeremy Benero, and uh, our second is Asha, he's five, and uh, the second one is Payne, and he's two, and we still wanted like a daughter because there are just three boys, and we want just last one to be their the, uh, sister. And uh, it's been exciting, man. I'm, I'm really excited, like, to just being in ministry and to, to serve the Lord and be a part of, be a really, really small part of what God is doing all around the world. I, um, it's, it's something that I've never planned to become I've never dreamed of becoming, but like I said, God has that masterpiece in, 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 his, in his timing and his, his plan. And um, <clears throat> today, uh, I just want to share uh, briefly, I'll touch base on some, some of the things that we do back home in, in, in ministry as we go through the message. Uh, but let's look, at the, let's look at the scripture that uh, Brother Josiah just read this morning. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 is 16. Yeah, that's, that's one of the, one of the nice, nicest speech in, in Vanuatu. That's on the island where I am living. So if you get a chance to come to Vanuatu, that's where we will be like going for some, some trip. And you get to experience the real Vanuatu in, in, the, in the ocean. And maybe we can have some Ike up in the jungle. Not sure what's happened when you like on an island. Uh, so uh, let's let's open our Bible into Ephesians, Ephesians of uh, five, verse sixteen uh, to seven to seventeen. <clears throat> Ephesians five sixteen to seventeen, and it says, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Now, why did Paul wrote this message uh, to the church at uh, Ephesus? He's, he's, he's basically wanting the, the church and the Christians and the people that are attending this church to know that you have to like follow God's example. Like when you read from, the, from chapter 5 verse 1 down to verse 17, it's basically Paul just saying, 
since you are now uh, wanting to follow Jesus, you have to set that example. Like, you have to be like Christ man, Christ's followers. Set that, that example. Um, instead of you uh, saying that you are following Jesus and your examples, your daily living is not, is living the opposite life of being a Christian. And um, when, when you look at verse 6, it says, let no one, like, let no one deceive you with just empty words, like lies. Just don't let anyone. Because you, why, why did Paul say that? Because he knows that you already have the truth that is in you, which is Jesus. And I find it interesting, like when you read from uh, verse 8, it says, if the Sorry, I'm just, I'm just going to find my, my script uh, for a bit. In verse 8, um, uh, it's really interesting when, when, when you see Paul uh, give some reasons why, why uh, you have to set examples. Look, in verse, in verse uh, 8, it says, For ye were sometimes darkness, because you were at once been living in the darkness before finding Jesus, before ge- receiving Jesus as your personal Savior, you were once living at a really, really dark place. And now, uh, yeah, <clears throat> light in the Lord. Now that you have found Jesus, you are living in the light, which is Jesus himself, which which he, he basically is, I am the light of the world. Walk as children of the light. So when Paul says, be the example, be the, um, be the, be the example for Jesus, he's basically just saying, you were, once, you were once been living in that place, and now you are no longer in, living in that place, you are living in the, in, in the light. Now, say example, when you live in a dark place, when you enter a really dark room, what happens? You can't see anything. It's really like blacked out. You get stumbled on things and you fall over. But when you get to walk in some places where it's light, there's light in there, you, 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 you can find things. You can see things that if it was in darkness, you won't see. So, now when we read down to verse 16 and 17, it makes sense. That Paul says, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time because why? Why we have to redeem time? Or why do we have to make good use of time? It's specific because we are in the days which are evil. And the Bible says, the Bible talks about this very often. We are living in the days that are evil. That's why Paul is warning, is giving these instructions to the church in Ephesus that you have to be very careful because you are following Jesus. And the message about Jesus, people will see in you, of your, or in me, in my daily actions, in my daily words, in my daily conversations, in my daily whatever. And then he continues to verse 17, he says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise. Don't do things like people who, like, they haven't had the truth in them. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. Making sure that you know the truth about God and being that, that real example for Jesus. Okay? Now, I remember back in, back in, 2000, in 2015, August 2015, I can remember it very clearly. I was in my first ever leadership conference in Luganville. And that's when we get like, our local pastors from different locations around the islands and up in Peak Bay, up in the bush. Uh, that's when we get to like, have this leadership conference, trying to invest, trying to uh, encourage our leaders uh, to keep going on, pressing on, despite whatever situations. Because it, when you live on an island, you easily give up sometimes. Like, people, if you, you, you feel discouraged, it's because you're alone. You're, you're by yourself, up in the jungle, up in the bush. 
Not like in town where you get like good communication, reception, and you can call somebody, pray with somebody, or go visit somebody because you have no tribe. You got, you, you got, you can try. You can, you can do whatever you want. But for us, it's really difficult. So I find myself in the situation I was in, 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 in the leadership conference, very single, young man, just, just hanging there and just wanting to absorb some, some good information. And I was, I was surrounded by this great, great young, this great man uh, who are really spiritually mature and they are giving me these this teachings. They are, are speaking on, on some really good topics about life just basically about like potential, your qualities, and, and your family, and your marriages, and, and the changes that it's going to take. And, and the one thing that I was listening to all this conversation, I was like, what? Life? This is my life. You don't have to talk about my life. This is my life. And I was like, no, nah, life, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And they were like, your, your qualities, make sure you use them to serve the Lord, your, your potentials that God has invested in you, you have to use it to make, make time for them to invest in God's things, like in God's business. I was like, what? I'm still young. I, I can do all of that like some, some years down the line. I'm good, man. I was like sitting there trying to like, ah, nah, this is not me. And then they were like, you, you know, you have to make time for your family. You have to invest time, make good, um, build good relationships. And I was like, man, I have no family. Yeah, I, I have my dad, my mom, but I'm young, man. I'm single. I can do whatever I want. And they went to topics like investing into marriage, uh, making sure you have time for your marriage. Otherwise, it's going to end up divorce or something. And I was like, no, I'm out. I'm out. I'm not, I'm not in this. And uh, they just keep going. And this guy stood up and he was like, our last topic is uh, making time. Making time. And man, I was like, I was just sitting there listening and it, that thing really got me. It was like making use of your time. And I was like, straight away, God's like, boom. Because they, they were like talking about life. I was like, nah, I'm good, man. And they were like, your qualities, your potentials, your, your skills, your talent. Your... I was young, man. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. And <laughs> when they hit this, man, I just, oh, it just really like hit me hard. And I was sitting there absorbing, trying to absorb this thing, man. I was like, yeah, I can have that life. I can have the quality. I can have the family that I have. I can have the changes over time. I can get married if I want. But man, time is running out, man. That thing got me. It just, just got me right there. And I was like, wow. Oh. I was like, God, speak to me. If this is me, then speak to me. If this, is, this moment is for me, then speak to me. I was like, just... Like, absorbing, just absorbing, man. I'm just absorbing. I was like, God, speak to me. Tell me whatever. This message got me thinking a lot of, like, a lot of times throughout the week. I woke out, I woke out of that, that meeting, just that single meeting. It messed my mind. Like, it's just messed my mind. It made me think why I spent six and a half years in the banking system. I was working with Westpac Bank for six, years, six and a half years. Since I left high school, I went to uni and been part-time and then went straight full-time. And for six and a half years, I was working with the bank, Westpac Bank. I came to Sydney at once, trying to like, learn some new stuff. And um, it made me think, it made me think, and I was like, wow, what am I, what have, I done during those six years. And it moves me to think how I wanted to live my life because at that time I was wasting a lot of time on me, just me. I was like investing in me, just making time for me. I was never thinking about Jesus, never thinking about God. Even though I knew him on my mind, I was never making time for him. And that mess, 
that messed my mind up. Just every minute, man, I was like, time is running out. When every time I look at the clock, I was like, man, I'm, I'm wasting one hour already. Like this, this, this whole day is gone. Tomorrow is coming. And next week is coming. Next month is coming. What am I going to do with my life? And that's what really got stuck on my mind. And just from there, um, uh, that message just keeps, keeps reminding me, keeps speaking to me. And uh, it made me readjust my focus. It made me readjust some of my, my decisions. It made me uh, make some changes, a lot of changes. And if that message don't mess my mind up during the time, you won't see me here. I was, like, I was never thinking about like, going to Bible school. Bible school? Ah, this is for old people, man. I'm, I'm young. You know? That's what I was thinking at the time. I was never going to become a pastor. Pastor? Mm. I'm, I'm going to the gardens. I'm, I'm, I'm going like, to become somebody walking in the business section, walking in bankings and making more money, buying more, more houses, buying cars. and You know? Pastor? No. Uh, no, one, no one wants to become a pastor. You know what? I was going to follow the same road that every young Nivan man were like marching through the gate. I was on my way, man. And because I, I was like thinking, man, I'm not good enough. God is not use somebody like me. Because I have a past history. I have... I have I have wasted a lot of time instead of investing into Jesus, in, instead of serving him. I was like in my early 20s. And, but you know what? Like I said, I was in the middle of this, all these situations and God has this masterpiece in, in his mind. God has this plan. And he's, he's looking over so many young men and women and he's looking at like me. He's sitting over there. That's you. That I want. And God spoke to my heart through that message. And it automatically just shift my keys. Like, because I think he has some cool plans. He has some, he has a lot of cool plans. And, and today is one of them. Today is, I'm just, I'm just fulfilling the reality that God has already have in place so many years ago. And, uh, after hearing the word of God that day, it sparked that fire. It just makes me uncomfortable in my comfortable zone. I was like, ah, what am I going to do at this time? I, I woke out from, from that conference and like completely, my friends were like, is that you? Is that you? And my family were like, is it you? Is it you? I was like, nothing strange, it's me. If, if there's something that's changed, I think it's God. God has changed, but I think I haven't made any changes. I think it's God that does the change. And, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've said a few times I was working with Westpac in 2008 to 2014, uh, and I, was got, I got invited to this leadership conference, and uh, things started rolling. Things started changing, and uh, after that, I got baptized. I got baptized. Uh, Pastor Jeremy was saying, where do you want to baptize? Do you want to baptize in the ocean? Because we are close to the ocean. I was like, nah, I want to get baptized in Jordan River because Jesus was baptized in Jordan River. I was like, Pastor Jeremy was like, Jordan River is in, it's a million miles away. But because we have a Jordan River in Vanuatu, I was like, let's go to the Jordan River, our Jordan River. <laughs> so we drive up to the big bay. That's up in the bush, way up in the bush. And I got baptized right there on, the, on that river. And man, that day, I was like, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I am so excited because I got baptized on the Jordan River. God put a, strong, a really strong calling on my heart in, in, in the ministry, alongside the Beniro family. And I just got married to this beautiful woman called Ruby. And we were like just finding opportunities to serve, man. We just jump straight. Uh, finding anywhere we can be a blessing to the ministry and to the, the Lord's work, especially. I started leading worship, as I've said, 
getting involved, and I became the youth pastor and uh, became the assistant pastor to Pastor Jeremy, and went to Bible school with my wife, and fantastic to see how and what God has done just over the years. Like Pastor was saying this morning, it just happened, it doesn't happen like, just like that. It takes years, it takes time, it takes commitment, it takes pro- uh, a very long commitment uh, to actually to be here today. So fast forward to the 2022, which is last year. Uh, for some reasons, the Finero family has asked to move to Australia, and uh, um, the church has devoted me to become the lead pastor. And now we are serving in Luganville Baptist Church, being the lead pastor, and and seeing all the things that God is doing, I'm, I'm just surprised every single day. Like I was telling Josiah and, and Pastor yesterday, I was like, man, this car, man, look at this. Just press this button and this thing, this thing moves. And this camera, man, look at that, that press camera, man. I was like surprised every now and then. All this trip, I was like, wow. And it, it makes me surprised every time when God thinks do the same thing to me every now and then because I don't get used to this. I normally don't get used to this because I'm not, I don't plan to be like this. But God planned me to be like this. Amen? So, a very clear example for, like, on my story, we, we already can see the things, that things do change. I was asking Pastor this morning, like, you guys have, since you guys started, is this the church? Is this, is it this auditorium that you guys started everything? And he was like, no, we were down at one old building and then things got changed and new facilities and, and then we had to move over. So it does. Things get changed over time. So if things do change in our surroundings every now and then, very fast or very slow or whatever the outcome, it helped us to, to see the value of time or it helps us to see the value of the time we have or we can appreciate the amount of time that God has given us today. Now, when we read from Ephesians, Paul was saying to the church at Ephesus, chapter 5, verse 16, making use of the time. What amount of time you, 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 you get allowed to use it when you are alive you have to be making good use of it. Because, why? Because these days that we are living in now are evil. And you've seen it. And I've seen it. On social media. On everywhere. Along the street. I was surprised when we were like riding scooters into the city. There's people sleeping on the street. And for us in Vanuatu, it's not normal. I was surprised. I'm shocked. I was like, what? I was questioning. What? Looking at everything along the street, it just closed my mind. Because this is not normal. The Bible already like warns, warns us as Christians that these days are evil. And it, it's going to become more evil and more harder. The longer we live, we, we will get to experience a lot of crazy things. And a lot of bad things because the Bible already clearly stated that these days are evil. These days are evil. Now today I want to, I want to just talk us through the value of time. The value of time, we have to define what's time, what, what is time, you know? If we can actually know what is time, then we can make use of time. If we don't know what is time, then we, we won't make use of time. If, unless you know somebody, you make, you make time for that, that person. If I, know, I don't know somebody, I, I won't make time for him. You have to know that person, then you, you can give yourself time to invest in that person. The value of time. Time, for a simple definition, I put it this way. Time is a measurement of non-stop it means it, it cannot stop, it keeps going. I, I was trying to find a, like a tape measure to try and measure time. And I said, what? If I measure time, time, keep, time keeps going and going and going. We just, we just split it into like seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. But otherwise, time keeps going. It's not stopping. 
Time keeps going. So time is a measurement of non-stop, consistent change in our surroundings every day, usually from a specific point of view. When you look at your house, you look at the flowers, you look at the trees, maybe a mango tree, that mango tree is not the same mango tree 2000, uh, maybe five years ago. It's, it becomes a really, really big tree. Why? Because time changes and things changes following time. That's why the Bible, Paul was giving instruction to the church in Ephesus to make sure, make good use of the time that you have now. Because you have time. And time is running out. Now, how should we speak? I'm looking at my, my time. It's running out. It's running out really fast. And some, some of you were like, I'm stuff. I'm, I'm angry, man. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> if I go home for like another hour, you guys are like, nah, I'm out, man. <laughs> okay, so time. That's why when you haven't visited somebody for a very long time, say your mom or your granny or your father or some, someone else, like during COVID, I was like, man, I want to see my dad. I want to see my mom. I want to see families. But things were not working out the way you were thinking or you were planning. And when you finally get to see them, you're like, man, I haven't seen you for a long time. Come here, man. Give him a hug. Or maybe you say, mom, you haven't changed a lot. You look the same. Or maybe you see your brother. You say, man, you are so grown, man. Like I, when I saw Josiah the first time, he was like this kid, man. He's just a mm, small kid. And yesterday, we were ha- I was hanging out with him, and he started, and we were like chatting, talking, and he's like, I work for this company. I, I look after this thing. I, I own this guitar. I, I have a studio. I said, what? Are you serious? And he's like, yep, yep. Time changes. People change. And we have, to, we have to realize that time is running out. Otherwise, we get stuck today of so just smaller things that it bothers us a lot and we didn't see time is flying out really fast. That's why it is very important. Or maybe you, you said something to your dad, like, <laughs> hey, dad, um, maybe you should cut down on some sugars. Some sugar. And your dad said, why? Because... If you don't cut down on sugars, the, the sugar will cut you down, you know? It's going to cut you down some days, somehow. You know, you're looking a bit big, and you be careful, man. Otherwise, the sugar will do the work. Maybe you said to your brother, I, haven't, I have been watching you very closely this year. Oh, the last, the last um, term of last year. Man, you've been growing a lot. You, you must be investing a lot of time into God's word. And I've seen a lot of things change, man. I've seen you loving the Lord way more better than last year. Or maybe you say to your daughter, oh, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just amazed to see the woman you, you are growing to become. You love the Lord like your mother does. You read the scriptures every now and then, man. I'm excited. I'm so glad. You know? You do these things for what? Because time is running out. You say these things for what? Because you know the time is running out. If, if it doesn't change the day, if he sees not changing the day, then tomorrow she will end up in somewhere else. And you will regret it because time really flies. Time really flies. Okay. As we think through some of the things, that can happen in a period of time, very short period of time. Let me show you what the Bible talks about, how we should use our time management very seriously. Ephesians of the five, as we read. Verse 16, Paul was really, Paul was really wanting to make sure that the church gets what he is saying. Because he's, 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 he's like, he knows them before. And then to see them make decisions to follow Jesus, and now they're living for Jesus, is worried that they may return back to the place where they are at before. So that's why he said, you guys were here. You guys were here. And now that Jesus has come into your life, and it made a change, and now you're moving forward, 
and you are moving further into the calling, the purpose-driven life for God, I'm, I'm worried that you will want to walk back a few kilometers to where you used to be. Because the temptations is sweet. The temptations is good. Oh, man, I, I want to go back. That life, man, it's nice, man. I want to go back. Like, the temptations is there. But Paul is saying, make sure you have to know that you've been here and you are moving every single day further and further out from that stinky place. Sin has been your master, but now Jesus is your master and you are moving out from sin into salvation. And praise the Lord, you are moving closer to Jesus. You've, you've no need to walk back there. It doesn't make sense. That's why, 17, Wherefore, be not unwise. Don't leave us unwise people. Not knowing how to use their time very wisely. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. If I know the will of the Lord, then I can live for the Lord. Amen? If I don't know the will of the Lord, I will live for sin. I will entertain sin. I will want to like eat, sleep, sin. Everything is sin. Because I'm, I am a sinner. But because of the blood of Jesus that has washed me and made me clean, I am now a free person. I can call you my brother because we have the same relationship with Jesus. I can call you my sister because we are a family. Because that's the family that I'm going to see in heaven one day. Amen? That's not the family that I'm, I'm going to see in heaven some days. That, nah. So that makes us wanting to become more closer to Jesus because time is running out. Because time is running out. Now, first thing. Let me look at this. Everyone has the same amount of time. Time is running out really fast. But everyone has the same amount of time. Everywhere around the world, not just in Vanuatu, not just, just in Australia, not just in America, not just in Europe, but everywhere. You were given the allowed time to live in this world, do whatever you want. That's why every one of us sitting here, we have a birthday to celebrate. You were given a birthday to know that you have some certain years to live. For us in Vanuatu, we have the life expectancy for uh, an event to live is about 75 years. That's it. I'm not sure why, for the reasons. Maybe for, because of the weather, because of um, the diseases and the tropical climate, I'm not sure. But for, for you guys in Australia, I've done some research, it's about 83 years. Life expectancy, that's what I get. And if you're a mad person, you will be like, you should know that we have 1,440 minutes in a 24 hours. And then, if we have 1,440 minutes in a 24 hours, then we have 168 hours in a week. So the 24 hours minus, multiply by 7 hours. 7 days, sorry. We get 168 in one week. Now, if you live in Australia, like I said, you are allowed up to 82, 83 years. I'm not sure if this is the right lifetime expectancy, but that's, that's what I've, I've found when I do some research. It, it, it differs from different country to country, like the life expectancy. Now, if you're like me, I feel like I want to know how many days I still have now. Because I know, the, I know the minutes for a single day, a 24 hours day, and I know how many hours for a week, and I know my life expectancy, living in a country called Vanuatu, is 75 years, then I want to know how many days I still have, so I can make good use of time. Amen? Okay. 75 years. I'm 34 years old. I'll take away the 34 years. I still have 41 years to live. So, 
that gives me a clear direction, gives me confidence to wake up every single day and say to myself, what am I going to do today? Because today is running out. Every year you have 365 days, right? Now, when you wake up tomorrow, cut down another one. It's now we've, we've come from 365 to, not sure how, how many days I've gone. But are you making good use of your time? Am I making good use of my time? That's a really important question to ask as a Christian. Now, when you are able to see these numbers, then it will help you make a good use of the time management and it helps you add value to your time. Amen? It adds value. You add value to your time because you know the time. It makes you like, oh, I'm wasting a lot of time, man. And I need to do something very proactive. I need to, like, finish reading my books. I need to buy a new house. I need to buy a boat. Or maybe you said, I need some more money. I need to go find more work. Or maybe you said, I need to finish reading my Bible. I never finish. I plan to finish reading my Bible, but I never. Because I don't have time. There's things taking away a lot of times. Maybe you just need to witness to the person that you've been praying about for so many years. Maybe it's your husband, maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your kids, man. Maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe it's your workmate. That you guys have been like good friends for a very, very long time. Maybe it's just smaller things like that. Making time for your family. And I, need, I think God is like speaking to us today that we, if we are not careful as Christians, we will, we will not make use of our time. And since I know that I have 41 years still to live, then I, when I wake up every morning, I will say this to, to the Lord, Lord, I, am, I know I have 41 years, but I'm in your hands. And please help me just do whatever I am capable of doing today. And that's why when I have this opportunity, like people invite me to the community, to the street, that's why when you come to Luganville, sometimes you show me like just in the street, just preaching, and I'm, why? You ask questions like, why? Because I'm running out of time. I've got some older people in my church. I've got some younger men in my church, some older women, some younger women. And sometimes with some, some people don't get along with me. For some reasons, I'm not sure. But man, I'm... I'm there's a spark in me. I was, I, I, I'm, I'm running out of time. If you don't come, I'm, I'm, I'm going, man. People will have to know how much time they have so that they can make good use of time. And if you don't know how much time you have, then the day is the day that you can adjust and know that this year will be a good year or you will waste a lot of time. I remember this one time I was preaching on the street, just in front of the market, big market house in Luganville. And I, I, and I look over and notice this old person sitting on like an old wooden piece of wood. And he was just staring at me. He was just staring at me. And I was like, mm, this guy looks like really creepy. I was like, what is he doing? Because we've got like every now and then people say things like this guy is not, you know, some witchcraft and some stuff like that. I was like, oh, I wish, I'm, I'm not sure this guy is a good person. And by the looks on that old man's face, he's like, he's really concentrating. But um, I, was, I was like, I'm not sure if this, he's, this is a good thing. And then all of a sudden when I finish preaching, he walks across from the street to, to where I am at and he's like, Son? I said, yeah. And he's like, um, can, I, can, I, can I ask you something? I said, yeah, for sure. He's like, um, I just, how old are you? I was like, I'm 33. Um, man, I wish I had, I had this age today. I was like, what? And he's like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting over there listening to your message. And man. I 
I wish I had a second chance. You ate. Uh, I was like, why? And he's like, I wish I could do more for the Lord. And I was like, wow. And he was tears running down. And man, I just explained to him. I, I, I said this to him. Uh, you don't have to worry, man. You, you're good. As long as today you can call upon the name of the Lord today. Because that's what the Lord has promised for you. If you call upon the name of the Lord today, you shall be saved. And he's like, can I do that? And then I said, yeah, for sure. I can help you do that. And I just lead him to the Lord, man. I, he's, he's just poor, he's out, just crying, and um, just hugged him. And I said this to him, if any time you want to come see me, uh, this is my phone number, this is my house, this is the church, you come, man. I'm, I'm willing, more than willing to just, just hang out with you. Just, and he's in, like he's in his 60-something. And he knows, he knows very clearly that 75 is just around the corner. And I, I had an awesome time talking to him and just encouraging him. And you know what? This is, today is the day. Today is the day to readjust, to, to make changes, to make time, to see the importance of time. Because time is running out, you know? Because if you were like me, back in the days, but I am still single. I was sitting there listening to the conversations. The family, life, changes, abilities, potentials, and changes. Ah, no, nah, that's me. No, that's, that's not me. Then you will realize a few, a few years down the line, you'll be like, no, I'm, I've wasted a lot of time. And you'll be like that old person. He was, he was like, I'm running out of time, man. I need to be safe. I need to be safe. So that thing just, just really, really encouraged me to like keep, keep preaching the word, keep preaching the message, the gospel message, because it has the power to change life. Paul said this, I am not the same of the gospel, amen? Because the power of the gospel changes people, amen? Not weapons, not social medias, not any other things. The power of the word of God, amen? It changes lives. It changes people's hearts. It changes the decisions, the, the, the things that you and I can change. Cannot change. The power of the word of God can change people's lives and people's hearts. And the second thing, before I finish, is what are you doing with your time? What am I doing with my time? Because you have the same amount of time that I have. You have a birthday, I have a birthday. Your life expectancy is somewhere around 83. I have a life expectancy that's somewhere around 75. And if we have that amount of time that we can make use of it every single day, what are you going to do with your time? In 2023, what are you going to do with your time? In 2023, what are the things that I am going to see fulfill come to reality that I've been praying about in 2022? With my time that I have, what are the things that I want to see changes? I am sure this church needs more volunteers in serving in different ministries. I've, um, like, I have the same, I have the same mind like pastor. I want more volunteers. This church needs more volunteers. This church has ministries that need leaders who can dedicate and commit to the, to the ministry. This church loves evangelizing. I hear some stories from pastor the other day, but who is willing to go? That's the question. I love what Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. He said this, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Joshua, he realizes that he only has this amount of time. And because he is one of the spies that they went to spy out the lamb, and he came back, this other guy was like, nah, I'm not going there. And he's like, okay. As the new leader, me and my family, if you are not coming, 
I'm standing at the crossing line, man. If you're not coming, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I'm going, man. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, I'm, I'm not worried about any, anything that's going to cost me. I'm going, man. Nothing will stop me from serving the Lord. And that's the stand. That's, that's, that's where Joshua is at. I'm not sure. How about you? How about me? It is your choice. It is, that this, it, it is a decision that you have to make. And as for me and my house, Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that what every Christian should do? Isn't that what every young man in this city has to do? Isn't that every young woman in this city can do? As for me, in this church, we will serve the Lord. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, and I'm about, about to finish, reminds us to make good use of our time. Ephesians, uh, sorry, Colossians chapter, 5, chapter 4, verse 5, it reminds us, everyone as a Christian, to make good use of our time. And the passage that we just read, it encourages us to make good use of our time because these days are what? They are evil. They are very evil. And they will be more evil as we move on. As we move on. In Psalms 91, verse 12, I love this passage, man. It's one of my favorite passages. That from the time that I was in that conference, I woke out of that conference, that message is what is pushing me up to the day. Psalms 90, verse 12, it says, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That's what David said. God, teach me, show me, Show me the numbers of my days so I can apply wisdom to the days that I live today. Amen? I can see that. And I'm, to be here today is one of the days that I'll, I'll be thanking God for because of this today. Because if I haven't known my days, and I, I, I would be messing up with something else back home in Vanuatu. I was like, maybe, maybe going to some, some divorces, some different things. But man, God is so good. God has been so good. I have a beautiful family, loving the Lord, serving the Lord. We, we do everything together. I wish you could, you could come sometimes and see my family and get to know us. Maybe if you have time, make time. Come visit for a while. Maybe one or two weeks. But as I've said, David said, and you should say, teach me, Lord, today, that I may know my number of days, that I'm still alive, so that I may apply wisdom, which is in your word, to my life, to my situation, to my family, to my business, to my relationship, to everything so that I can make good use of time now, rather than I regret down the road tomorrow. Unless you know your days, you will still live like this world is going to be better and better and better. Because the Bible clearly speaks of where your treasure is, there will be also the place where your heart is going to be. Don't store up your treasures in this world world. Why? Because it's going to be rotten. It's going to burn down by fire. Because it's, it's not going to happen with you. Amen? Still have your riches, your treasures in heaven, so that one day you can enjoy them in heaven. You might not enjoy them right now in this world, but some days you will. You will. You will. For sure. I want to finish I want to finish off by giving this, this last question, this challenge. Don't waste your time on something that you know it won't last. You know, I was talking during the morning tea breaks and uh, we were like praying and uh, I was saying something to um, Pastor and uh, my brother over there. And after we finished praying, I was sharing some of the difficulties of the challenge of the people that have been investing time. 
investing so much things into their lives and then they decide to walk away. And you know the feeling? It, it gives you pain. It, it's, it just sometimes discourages you. And he said, brother, don't ever, ever be discouraged. Amen? He said this. No, everything that you do for the Lord doesn't go out in vain. Amen? Thank you, brother. Awesome. Really, really powerful. And I want to say this to you. Make time to whatever situations you find yourself in today. And don't ever be discouraged like the words he spoke to me. Don't ever discourage if people are walking away. Because what you do for the Lord in their lives is not God in vain. Amen? It is powerful. It is powerful. Some days, God's going to use the testimony somewhere else. And it is through you because you invest time. You make time for those people that have, that have walked away from you so many years ago. So many years ago. And I've seen this a lot of times. Don't waste money on things that will go rotten one day when the trumpet sounds. Everything's going to be here and here. That's the destination for everything that belongs to this world. Amen? It is you who is going to heaven. Not the things that you have spent a lot of time trying to invest into. People are dying today without knowing Jesus. Everywhere around the world. And if we as Christians, we just sit and wait and do nothing about it. The Bible says faith without action is dead. Faith is the key. Faith with actions is the key to a miracle. Amen? If we just sit and wait, we just sit and wait. Nothing will happen. But if we sit, we pray, and we move, come out from our comfort zones, and we move, something is going to happen. Something's going to happen because faith and action equals miracle. Really powerful equation. I want to finish by reading this beautiful passage from Psalms 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days, Lord. Teach us today. Just teach us. Come in a form that you can speak to me today. Maybe by somebody. Maybe through that, that person. Maybe through that thing, that situation. Just teach me today, Lord, that I may know that, I'm, that my days are running out. So that I may apply wisdom to my days today. So I can be a blessing to your work and to the people that you have surrounded them with me today. What an amazing thing to do today. Just ask the Lord. And I invite Pastor to come up and wrap up this message this morning as we finish off. And I want to thank you for this opportunity to be a pastor. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you for that reminder. And... Uh... You know, we all have a certain number of days, don't we? By the way, you have 350 more days this year. If you haven't figured that out, it's 15th, 360, a little bit of math. Um, but if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, today would be the best day to get that settled. Mm -hmm. And if you know Christ as your Savior, but you've never been scripturally baptized, it'd be another good day to have a conversation about that. We'd love to, uh, we'll, we have to work out a new place to baptize, but we'll find one, right? Uh, you say, why? Because we've been baptizing at my house. We just don't have any more room for you. They just keep coming and coming and coming. That's okay. Um, but if you're here today and you've been saved and baptized, but you're not a part of this church, we'd love to have that day be today, and we can work that out with you. But any way that we can be a help and a blessing to you, let us know, and I will be happy to do that. Let's close in a word of prayer, and then I'm going to ask for the June if he'd come. And uh, it's quite fitting. Uh, the, best, the song that we're going to sing already scheduled to conclude the best way to redeem our time is simply to trust God and obey, to act on the faith. Father, we come before you this morning. <clears throat> Again, we thank you for your word, we for this time together. Now, I pray that you help us each to number our days and to apply uh, your wisdom to them. And Lord, may we invest each day and each moment for you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Brother June. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, special day. Uh, we will sing a, a last song uh, entitled "Trust and Obey." We will sing only the first, second, and the last verse. May you all stand, and we will sing "Trust and Obey."
Thank you once again for coming out this morning, and uh, thank you, Brother Ishmael, for bringing the Word of God to us, and that great reminder. If we can be a help to you in any way, I'll be available after the service. We'd love to see you back tonight, 5 o'clock. Uh, we'll have our evening service, continue our study of the book of 2 Thessalonians, and I look forward to that time together Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We still have our prayer meeting um, and a Bible study. It's still done via Zoom, so if you don't get that link and you'd like to, uh, those of you who joined last uh, Wednesday night, we had Brother Portillo with us, and so that was a blessing to hear about what's going on in Argentina. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you then as well. Let's close the service in a word of prayer. And then again, if I could be helped in any way afterwards, I'd be happy to do that. Father, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for the opportunity we have to be here. Lord, we thank you for the reminder from your word. We thank you for each day that you give us. Uh, those of us who we know you as our Savior, Lord, may we invest each day the best, to the best of our ability for you. And Lord, if there be anyone here today that doesn't know you as your Savior, Lord, uh, no greater day than today than to come to that place where we put our faith and trust in you. Now, as we go from this place, we pray that you give us safety as we go. Give Brother Ishmael safety as he travels this afternoon, this evening back home. Uh, to be back with his family and the ministry there. Uh, but Lord, help us now as we go from this place to trust you and obey each step of the way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.